Good evening and welcome to something to talk about. Again, a double header tonight. There's so much to talk about on Guam and we have got a couple of guests for you that I think you're really going to enjoy. There is a history fair that's going to be coming up next weekend. It's called the Family History Fair and it's about stories that bind us. And the group that we'll be talking to in a few minutes will talk about how we trace our family history. Have you done that yet? You might think as a Chamorro family, you know who all your family was before, but they're going to figure out a way to help you find out for sure if those are really your bloodline. And then we've got Taylor Cruz is our guest. She's a special guest of ours. She is, I think, going to be six years old coming up next month. And she is a survivor of childhood cancer, and we are so happy that she has come today to join us and be a part of a great informational uh, talk show about just how you deal with childhood cancer as a child. Her mom, I think, is going to come and join us, too. That's all ahead on Something to Talk About. Thank you for coming. Come on. Wonderful. She defers. She knows what she's doing. She doesn't. Thank you. That was very interesting. Yeah. And welcome back to something to talk about. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. And thank you to King's Restaurant for their incredible hospitality. We've got hot water. We've got cold water. We have fruit. And we have fine guests tonight. Uh, I'd like to introduce to you, first of all, Jeanette Hurst from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And Rosemary Cruz, who everyone knows on Guam because... She's Rosemary Cruz. She is the <laughs> most blondest Chamorro Cruz that you will find on Guam, and she sticks out uh, like a sore thumb, not be only because of her fantastic looks, but because of her incredible personality. Uh, there is a great event coming up on September 27th. It's a family history fair, and it is, I I'm reading here, this, it says the, story, the stories that bind us, and we're looking back at our lineage is that what we're doing yes we have put together a really amazing event to help people identify research learn how to find out more about their families yeah and well I, you know the the thing that strikes me interesting and curious is to why guam uh, guam has such a rich history and everybody knows who they're related to even though you know you always know who you're you're my cousin from a third generation to a <laughs> Do you find that? You've been, oh, by the way, uh, Jeanette's been here for about 18 months. Well, we, we've been here about six months. I'm sorry, six months. We're here for a total of 18. 18 months. Okay, yeah. so you've and been here half a year, and yes, now you already yes, know what I'm talking about. Yes, I do, and it's wonderful. I love helping people and learning about uh, tomorrow families. They're close and big, and they talk a lot with each other, and that's great. We also work with Micronesia. So our assignment, although we're based in Guam, so we work with a variety of people and um, groups and... So it's a less concentration on the Chamorro families than it is on families who have migrated out of, out of maybe the Federated States of Micronesia. We even go into the Federated States to do our job too. Yeah. But, but we're just interested in families everywhere across the world. Um, I don't know if you've heard of Family Search, which is a... a I've heard of like... There's a website. Okay. And there's a family history library in Salt Lake City. Okay. So our church, in our church, families are really central. And so we, um, we help people throughout the world um, look for their families and learn more about them. And so um, we have the website, we have records. In fact, we, have rec we collect records from all over the world to help everybody. Our assignment happens to be Guam. So, so tell me, what is, what is the... What is what is it about the ancestry? What is it that you want? Do you want people to know for themselves that there's something they don't already know? And what is the purpose in the interest of the church? Well, our our purpose is really to have the hearts of the fathers turn to their children and the children to the fathers to create that loving bond in families because we believe families. And of course, you on Guam know this. Families are so essential to our happiness, to our emotional, our physical, our, our economic well-being. And we as a church believe that families can be together forever. And so That must be tough these days. <laughs> <clears throat> that must be tough for the, the church in, in all denominations. The church is centered around families. And, and in these last years, decades, it's been difficult because well, families, families are so fractured. Yes, they're under attack from a lot of a lot of different forces. And so we really see 
understanding and knowing and loving our ancestors and our descendants is mm -hmm. really essential to our own happiness. So how do you do this? I mean, how, what, you go up to somebody and say, do you know who your mother is? <laughs> or do you know who your father is? How, how, what's the approach? The, and, and in the way we work, in our, um, well, we often just get into very casual conversations with people because everyone, usually people like to talk about their families. Yeah. And if they show an interest, then we have a variety of ways we like to help them. Um, the fair is going to be one way we can help people that are more interested. As I said, we have a website, Family Search, with millions of records on it, and uh, we can teach people how to begin their basic research. The focus of this particular conference is stories, and we like to help people learn how to collect the stories and keep the stories in their families. Boy, the stories here are rich. <laughs> I, in just the Cruz family alone, uh, have you learned any about the, anything about the, the Cruz family or, and, and, uh, or other members of the church? Well, yes. We, yeah. In fact, that's why uh, we like our assignment so much, is that people tell us the most amazing stories. Isn't it? Yeah. Just, and everyone has a story. And yeah. that's also what's interesting about it. There's no one right or better way to be a family or to have stories. Every single person has their own treasure. and. How it's difficult is it? Because well, I was alluding to the, the, time, the, the, the time in our lives, the time in our history. Families are fractured. It's not the same sort of family that you and I might have grown up with or Rosemarie might have grown up with. You will find people who do not have any clue where they came from. A lot. And you know what? It's, it's not so bad on Guam, but it's it, other places it is. What were you going to say, Rose? What, uh, were you going to say? <laughs> I, I, <laughs> no. You experience? No, no, no. Okay. But, I mean, you, you understand. I mean, that, yes, well, she's helping my husband, you know, Jim. He's been doing a lot of it. And, research uh, to, to, you know. with their help, yes. Is he finding things that he never knew before? I think so, probably. Yeah. Okay. But, but, it's, but to me, the important thing is now is for everybody, especially young people, to talk to the old people, talk to your grandparents, anyone who's old, get the, get the information from them. Because once they're gone, you may not be able to get a lot of facts yeah. and um, you know about the way pe their ancestors lived or yeah. what they did. You need to talk to old people. Yeah, like, well, talking like to me. old people. Old people like <laughs> I talk to old people like her every week, and she talks to old people like me every week. Uh, but but on the mainland, for example, it's we you meet have a, a lot of people that don't even know their grandparents. Have a clue. Yeah, yeah, it's true, and um, it, it's funny though because most people would like to know. I mean, I think people, even if their families sure, are you want fractured, to know where you came from. they want to know. I think all of us kind of need to know that. Yeah. And like, like Rose said, uh, it's more than just the facts. You want to know what were their personalities like? How did their families function? What kind of work did they do? What kind of lives did they live? And I think, yeah. I think everybody, I, I, I can say I haven't met anybody who didn't want to know something. In Guam, I, I know that there are characteristics of family, and some names are, you have dubbed names that represent something that that family had done. They were a fisherman, or they were a farmer, and you know mm -hmm. what your family sort of sustenance was, and that was based largely on that. In your family, now where are you from originally? Well, we're how far back have you traced, and what country, what area <laughs> of the globe were you from? One line of mine, I've gotten back 11 generations. That's but wow. I have not run into any any royalty. Sometimes when you hit a royal line, then you know it's, it's yeah. And then done. you're like yeah, yeah it's done. It's like I've <laughs> achieved. Yeah. But mine, Unless no. Unless you can chase it all the way back to Jesus Christ, and then yeah. you're good. Yeah. But I haven't been able to do that. Yeah, okay, all right. But my family are mostly um, English, okay. British Isles, mm -hmm. and it is interesting as you study the families what informs them. So. My people were involved in the Industrial Revolution. They were coal miners and iron workers and very much they were workers, laborers hard workers, yeah, yeah. and industrial workers. Um, in our family, what, the, the story of our family is them joining the, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and migrating. So they're part of this great migration, migration. first to the United States and then west. And that really informs our family. We have stories of you know the hardships. So you have generations of this of your of church. Of this story, yeah. yeah of and, your church. and I think a lot, as you were suggesting, a lot of families have a narrative or yeah. a story or a characteristic. So then, so then, <laughs> after having learned that, did that sort of solidify your identity? Did you feel Definitely. more? 
Well, in my family, too, we grew up telling the stories. So my parents... Well, you just want to know it's true. I knew. <laughs> that you were lying happened? about any of it. <laughs> well, and I get curious. You know, you hear yeah. part of a story and you want to know, well, why did they do that? And right. where did they go next? So um, we told the stories, and so it definitely informed us as children. And part of it... Like these pioneers, they did hard things. So I told my kids, you know what? In our family, we do we hard. Were hard th workers. We do hard things. Don't clean your room. We can do that. Exactly. <laughs> do what your ancestors do. Don't complain do. to if me. If for any other reason, then yeah. it gives you the confidence to guide the rest of your families for your generations. No, I, I think that's everybody. You're right. Everybody wants their identity, and I think that in this day and age, I hate to sound like that, but wouldn't you agree? In this in this day and I think age, so. because we're so fragmented in our society. We come from different ways and we've gotten, you know, the ways that we've assembled families is not traditionally the way that we might have yeah. done so when we were growing up. And so people want to know, um, you know, what, what, what it is, where it is. Where did we come from? Yeah, we Why come are we from? here? So how are we going to use the information? What are we, how was, how does the church use the information? How do, um, it's really, the church doesn't really use it so much. It's just to kind of strengthen it's members and just kind of, uh, again, help with that identity. We uh, draw closer as families and... Um, That's a mission. It is. It is a mission. To build families. It's as simple as that, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's as simple as that. I tell you what, the, the that's I think that's fascinating information. History is a fascinating subject, it is. and your own personal <laughs> history, you cannot uh, possibly think that nobody wants to know that. No one's bored with so, that. <laughs> yeah, no one's bored with that. Family History Fair is coming up. It's Stories That Bind Us uh, on Saturday, September 27th uh, from 9 to 3, and you're encouraging even preteens from age 12 on Yes, up we find uh, actually they're some, some of the most interested ones, and we have um, a great... Um, website too uh, it's very um attractive you know okay. to the kids too they're online we're going to be teaching them how to make youtubes to record family stories oh, and that's share nice. them using social media oh i bet you'll get a kick out to, of that yeah, yeah. lots that's, of things it's fascinating it really is fascinating where where is the fair going to be taking place it's going to be at the uh, barragata uh, steak center which is on route eight okay um next to what used to be National, National Office, Office Supply. Okay. I think they still have a warehouse there at the okay. back. So that's your, be that's there. church. Where you that's are. where okay. our church right. is. Uh -huh. where your church so is. And that's church on there. Saturday, the, the 27th. From, from 9, 9 to 9 3. So okay. we have our plenary speaker is uh, Gillette Leon Guerrero. She's is, awesome. And she yeah. has told a fascinating story. She's awesome. Yeah. And so, and our, our theme is the stories. This year we're focusing on the stories. Yeah. We have. Um, Monique Story from Mark and also Amira Brunel Perry from Mark, and they're yeah. going to share with us the uh, fabulous resources available. Those are some. Those are some impressive resources. They are, yeah. and there's so much to learn there, so much to see. Well, then, you can add Guam to your family history. Could you not? Now you are. You will. Yes. Add Guam to yes. your family history. I made there a stop you here. go. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pleasure to meet you. Thank Sister you. First, I really enjoyed meeting you. Thank you so much, Mother. Marie, that Rose Marie Cruz, thank you for having her. And we appreciate the, the time that you guys have taken thank tonight. Thank you. Come on back. Next time we'll have another conversation after okay. it's over. Come on over. <laughs> to the, I'm going to go come find see us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got another great guest coming up for you. Come on back for something to talk about. Welcome back to Something to Talk About. We are so happy that you are joining us here at King's tonight. We have fruit and we have other food because I ordered other food from King's for my special friend. This is Taylor Cruz and this is her mother, Jennifer Cruz. And we are so happy. Honestly, I am so happy that you are here. This is, I've interviewed you before. Yes quietly and discreetly on the radio yes. but this is a kind of big a, a big of a, a bitter i mean a big of a bet this is much of a bigger deal yeah this is much <laughs> of a bigger deal because we have the subject of all of our conversations tay tay is, they call her tay tay in the yeah. family right you guys yes, call her tay tay and then and then people who are really close to you call you tay and yeah. then all the really important people call mm. you taylor <laughs> okay. <laughs> all you people who are, all the people at school call you Taylor. How are you? Good. I'm so glad you're here. Let me guess. You go to the academy. Oh, no, wait. That's a wrong school. What school do you go to? St. Anthony Catholic, Catholic School. Catholic school. What, what grade are you in? First. First grade. How old are you? Five. Five. 
You are a five-year-old girl, and Jen, correct me if I'm wrong, but she's got the soul of a 40-year-old woman. Yeah, she does. <laughs> yeah. Tay has had an, an incredible life. You yeah. have had an incredible life. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Taylor was diagnosed with cancer when she was... Two. Two. She just turned two, a little bit over two years old. And so she has been cancer-free for... Uh, three years. Three years. Yeah. It's, it's interesting because Jennifer, no secret, I'm sure everybody knows, her father is a surgeon and her mother is a nurse. Mm -hmm. And it was a medical situation that was kind of in your face. Yes, yes. yes. And it was definitely different being on the other side, you know, yeah. I mean, being the parent, hearing the news, your child has cancer. It was, I mean, I, I remember just standing there. And Mike, kind of, I think he was shocked too, because it was, we found out via email. So he oh. he sat in front of the screen. Oh, give me the food. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. This is Taylor's food because we're gonna yeah. feed Taylor whatever mm. Taylor is gonna eat because she's yeah. our special guest. All right, rice, portuguese sausage, eggs. <laughs> Typical five-year-old. <laughs> oh yeah, she needs a fork. I'm sorry. Thanks, Thanks Ken. Me. Okay, go ahead, oh. baby. You want you want to say prayer? You want to say prayer? Yes, yeah, she always okay. does. Let's do. Let's do it. Um, Go ahead. Can you do it? Ready? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bless us, O Lord, and least our gifts, which are about to receive for thy bounty to Christ our Lord. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm sure all the nuns would love this. All of them would love this. They, they, you're you're going to get an yeah, A. Yeah, baby, go ahead. You can go ahead and eat, honey, because she's, uh, Taylor's just coming in from after school. There's no joke that we, um, so, or surprise, that we, we, we film actually on a, on a, in an afternoon, but hi, so, hi. yeah, because Taylor doesn't come in her hi. uniform on a Sunday. So, um, a shock to medical professionals that, yes. that yes. your daughter has cancer. Yes. Uh, yeah, it was definitely different coming from, you know, being on the receiving end, for sure. Yeah. And I, I just remember standing there, and Mike was in front of the computer screen, wouldn't, didn't move a muscle, and I was looking at him like, I need some help here, I can't deal with this. Yeah. The first thing that came to my head was, is my child going to die? How bad is this? Because we didn't know the extent of it. We had just, um, we just came back because she had the tumor removed, and we didn't think it was cancer. We didn't even sit around and wait for the pathology report. We just said, ah, oh, don't worry. It's nothing. Yeah. yeah. It's nothing. But then Mike got worried when it took over <laughs> two weeks down <clears throat> since we came home, and he's like, something's going on. Something is wrong. That path report, you know, should have been back already. What's going on? Yeah. And come to know, you know, it was cancer, and they were being very careful yeah. with telling us because they knew there that, you, go. you know, Mike was a doctor and yeah. everything, so. so. Did they, do, do you think they took extra care or that they? Yeah, they did, Yeah, they did. When you're on the receiving end of that bad news, yeah. when you're on the giving end of that bad news, yeah. it's, it's a exactly. difficult. Exactly. So I gotta ask, she's, <laughs> hello. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, she is the most vibrant. The, <laughs> She's got a lot of not, energy. There's not, a, there's not a moment to lose in life no, for her. She's, yeah. She is all full force. Yeah. Um, what, what, does, what are her recollections? I mean, there, were, there, was, a, there was a time. <clears throat> we went through a pretty tough time yeah. of chemotherapy, right? Yes, she did um, three months. She was supposed to do four months, mm. but Taylor took part in a study. Um, it was, and um, we were kind of, in the beginning, Mike was kind of like, oh, I don't know, we want to do this. And I said, Mike, we got to do this. We got to help other kids. So she, we, had a, we had an opportunity to help other kids um, um, with chemotherapy. What, what they were trying to do was trying to see where, if less was best. And in the end, we found out less treatment was better. What, is he, what do you mean so, by less treatment? Because the kind of chemotherapy that she gets, it's, you know, of course, uh, chemotherapy is toxic to the body. So they were finding out that a lot of kids were, um, you know, all the toxicity, all the side effects of the toxicities were um, hurting the kids. So they wanted to see if less treatment was better. Oh, yeah. so for, for, that, for, for that classification of okay. Taylor's kind of chemotherapy, I forget, Mike knows the specifics, yeah. but her type uh, and her classification of um, cancer. So we took part in the study and we found out <clears throat> that it, it actually did help that less was best, and it didn't. It didn't um, benefit to have an extra month of chemotherapy. Wow. Yeah. So she had to endure a lot of <clears throat> hearing tests, a lot of um, 
CAT scans, MRIs. I mean, she was a pro. She How knew. Was, you know, I've always been curious <clears throat> because they always say that kids are so resilient. They are. During that time. They are. I'm pretty sure that you have seen, you're a nurse. Yes. And you have seen adults go yes. through procedures. <clears throat> and when you saw your daughter going through those procedures, what was that like? Well, it broke my heart, of course, you know, to see her get it, you know, have the IDs inserted and everything. But like I said, she was a trooper. I mean, she remember, she was only two years old. <clears throat> Even Did then, she know what was going on? She she called it her ID. I mean, she couldn't say IV. Yeah, 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 yeah. So she had the little bandage there. And what I, you know, from what I know, nursing school, what you do yeah. with children, you let them take control. So what I did with her was I let her flush her IV lines because I had to do that um, when we were at home. I had to flush her lines, so I had her wrap it. I had her. I even had to give her injections at one point because her white blood cell count was That's low. That's different from, for you. That's not a patient. Yeah. yeah. And I was kind of like, "You're kidding me, right? Do I have to do this to yeah. my own child?" So um, what I did was I let her pick which side and she knew she's like mommy that it was there the last time let's do the other side <laughs> and she had her band-aid ready so she knew and I'm like ready set go and then once I was done she do her like two seconds of crying and then she put the band-aid right over it do you remember that Taylor no nope. you don't remember that stuff do you what remember? do you remember what do you remember I think you don't? Are you sure? Are you, do you remember the pricks in your arms or your leg? You remember See, that? Yeah, I do. You do you remember, remember not having any hair? Yeah. What was that? What do you, What was that like not to have hair? Bad. Was it bad? Yeah. Why? Because everyone was teasing me. Oh, were people teasing you when that you didn't have yeah, hair? Yeah. When she, we came home, she went straight. She we put her in daycare, and she kind of oh, had a difficulty. Yeah. At one point, she thought she was a boy. And, Oh, okay. Well, you know, kids. But look kids at you kids. now. <clears throat> Do you, did it hurt at all? Do you remember anything that hurt that that hurt you? No. Is that what they say? Is that what they say? No. The only thing, because it was so difficult, because they even gave us painkillers for her, and it was just so hard to assess on a two-year-old because she was running around all the time. And after her chemotherapy, it was just we, Mike and I would crack up sometimes because. She'd be running around, She's, you could tell she is so sick. She's running around, running around, and without warning, <laughs> she oh, just puked out of nowhere. So I'm running around, following her <laughs> with the basin. I'm like, yeah. there she goes. Yeah. I mean, we'll be sitting at the dinner table, and all of a sudden she just pukes, and then she'll like, carry on. Everybody wow. else, you know, an adult will be like, I'm so sick, I can't do this. But she would just puke, and then be like, okay, where's my food now? <laughs> as, medical, as medical professionals, you've seen a lot of that. You've seen yeah. adults handle less. What yeah. is it about children that they can they can handle that better? I, 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 I don't know what it is, but for, for Taylor, I think she just wanted to play. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she looked forward she to that. She has energy. She's she, different energy. She, and that's what she looked forward to. And, and the toys. They oh. showered her with toys. I don't oh, know what see? to do with the toys. Yeah. I mean... She, she would have a CAT scan, they'd give her a toy. I mean, she was just so accustomed to having toys. Why is it that she, did you know, do you notice that she does that to you? That when you, when I ask a question, she, she, did you, did you notice? No. She brushed, she brushed your arm like four times. Oh. <laughs> like when you're getting ready to answer a question, she departs from the Portuguese sausage and then, <laughs> did, you, did you notice that? No, not at That's all. That's interesting. She brushes your arm, like she, like grabs you, brushes your oh. arm and goes back. I don't, maybe when we, I think that that no, just like that. I think maybe that. Do you think that underlying there, she knows? I think she does. I think she knows a lot more than she. I mean, so yeah. a couple of times we talked to her about it, and she she does remember. Um, she definitely has a scar from her um, pick line that she had on her arm, so she knows that's her reminder that she did have an IV at one point, and yeah. that's where her chemotherapy. So you was. take her back how often? We used to take her back every three months for two years. And each time we'd hold our breath and we'd be like, please give us good news. Because every time we'd go back, we'd have, she had to go through like uh, MRIs, CAT scans, blood draws, name it. She's had it all, hearing tests. So. And every time she's come, no, and, I'm actually, yeah. when I cyber stalk you, that's, they all say that. <laughs> you always say it's a clean bill of health and everything is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're always so happy. And yeah, and every, and. We're just so thankful that she's still here with us and she will still be with us. And how do you feel, Taylor? How do you feel, Taylor? 
Okay. You do? I think it's a cause for celebration when you have reached this. Oh, do you yeah. have to go back every year? Yes, now we're down to annual checkups. So we go back every March. And all is good. Yes. Well, she's eating Portuguese sausage. Today, yeah. So let me yeah. tell you what. Um, <laughs> our friends at Chuck E. Cheese are so happy to have you here at King's. And they Ooh. want you to have a party. <gasps> and so they have invited you and as I think maybe it's 10 of your friends oh. to go to Chuck E. Cheese. What do you say? Yay! Yeah. To Auntie Lucy and Uncle yep. Dave Alcorn and Miss Bromley from Chuck E. Cheese. Wow. They want you to go to Chuck E. Cheese and they want you to have a ball. You have a lot of tokens, you have pizza, you have drinks. Oh my. You have okay, a you have party. To say you have to look at the camera yeah, and say, look at the camera, say thank you to Auntie Lucy and Uncle Dave. Thank you. Auntie Lucy. Auntie Lucy. Auntie Lucy. And, and Uncle, Uncle Dave. And Uncle Alcorn. Dave. Yeah. And Miss Bromley. Miss Bromley. Bromley. Say it. Miss Bromley. Bromley. <laughs> <laughs> Remember those names. They'll get yes. you a lot of chuck and cheese. <laughs> Thank you, Taylor, for coming. You're such a sweet, 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 sweet. Thank she's you. honestly, she's the sweetest girl in the <laughs> class. Enjoy your food. Thank you so Stay much. Stay healthy, right? Yes. Or do you guys, is there like a special diet? Or oh, no. no. She eats whatever she, she eats wants. She eats everything. Yeah. Except vegetables, but she eats. Yeah. <laughs> we have fruit. Yeah. Well, I think that's it. Thanks, Jen. Thank you. That's a personal story, and we're so happy to have been here to tell it for you. I'm just crying. I don't know why. But, <laughs> but we appreciate you coming tonight. Thank you so much uh, to King's Restaurant and to Chuck E. Cheese for this wonderful gift to Taylor Cruz. And... Um, We'll look forward to seeing you on the radio. We have something to talk about. Say goodnight. Good night. Yay. Yay. Good job. Good job. Honestly, why did you make me cry? I know. I don't cry. I've never cried. I always cry. Oh. <laughs>